Hey guys, welcome back to the car review series. So as you can tell by the title, yes, I'm back to this card once again. So it's time for me to like sit down and look at this card again. I already did like a 20 minute video talking about this card. If you want to see it in the car review series, the link will be in the description. But this time, we're just going to kind of just analyze the card, the effect it has on the game. And I just want to kind of clip any misunderstandings. So as you guys know, I am not a big fan of Soul Charge. I despite the card think it's really unhealthy for the game I do not know why it was made besides just you know making money and you know it's it, it has broken the game it definitely has you know uh, it has definitely changed the state in which the game of Yu-Gi-Oh has been played and of course in this recent list of uh, the July list Soul Charge is not hit at all and it remains at three and a lot of people are wondering why did Soul Charge remain at three how come it didn't get hit what's going on why is our ban list so lame and really nothing has moved and I want to go ahead and clear up this misunderstanding right now just think of this list that we have right now this July list just think of it as a world's list like that's all you gotta do is just understand that this list is just for worlds and everything makes sense so at worlds they decided that you know everybody comes together and, and plays at worlds that the list will combine and everything will go down so for example and here in the TCG Stratos is banned and the OCG Stratos is at 1, so when we combine the list and everything goes down, everything goes to the lower state, we have Stratos banned, therefore for Worlds, Stratos is banned. Now, of course, Konami, besides I really can't really determine whether, you know, making a profit was really one of the things that they wanted to do, because it seems like Dragons of Legends is pretty much done selling, but... Definitely, they wanted to keep in mind that, you know, when combining lists, so for this list, definitely one of the key cards that is going to be used in world that's being hyped in worlds is the cards in Dragon's Legends, Soul Charge, you know, they even got uh, the voice actor of Raphael guest starring at, at world, so, you know, he's probably going to be using some kind of deck, he's of course going to use Soul Charge, and then I think, um, also, who's going to be that thing? It's Officer Trudge, and he has some cards from Dragons of Legends as well. So, definitely, Dragons of Legends is the thing, the theme for this world, and the world is in Italy. So, why do they want to hit the card, which can, you know, be the you know one of the poster cards of Dragons of Legends and the world? And also, they want the card to be used in worlds, right? So, let's say that Soul Charge was, hypothetically, it got hit on the July list. And then you go to Worlds, and then you combine the the list, and everything goes down. Soul Charge would be going down because of the list. <laughs> and it doesn't seem like that's what Konami wanted to do. And really, the movements that we've made on the list uh, really haven't phased the game when it comes to Worlds, you know? Uh, for Well, except for Gear Gear Gear. Gear 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 down, going down to 1 definitely phased uh, that deck when it comes to its... Not only its appearance in, you know, uh, regionals and the upcoming nationals, but also in worlds as well, because, you know, when the list combine, everything goes down, so Gear 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 will be at one for worlds, so that might deter some play of that deck. But, you know, Rota going up to two, well, they have Rota at one, so it's at one. Uh, Goyo Guardian coming off ban here, well, Goyo Guardian is still banned over there, so it's banned. Uh, you know, Magician of Faith going up to two. Uh, I don't know where it's at. I'm not sure if it's at one or banned over there. So whatever it is, yeah, you know, formula synchrons at two over here, but it's at one over there, so it's still at one. You know, so the changes that was made on this July list really don't affect how world's being played, besides gear, gear, gear. So like I said, they really didn't want to move Soul Charge or really even hit the other decks because they want to see those decks at Worlds. They want to see Hat at Worlds. They want to see you know Madochi's at Worlds, and you know for them. If they hit that that particular deck, then it will be affected at Worlds. The same thing is that another rule is that if we don't got it, they can't use it, you know. So, I'm not sure about this information, but I know Next Challengers, uh, you know, they're getting Next Challengers in the OCG. Uh, they can't use that. They, they cannot use Next Challengers. You can't use, in Worlds, you cannot use cards that everybody doesn't have, you know. And... It was the same with Last Worlds. I actually went to the Last Worlds in Las Vegas, and they pretty much had their own list, and if 
everybody doesn't have it, you can't use it. I actually saw a person actually get uh, disqualified in a side event, not even the main event, a side event. Or you can, you know, you get to play for free. Got disqualified because he summoned a Quasar, and Quasar was banned because not everybody had Quasar at the time. Of course, with Quasar's reprint, everybody will be able to get Quasar. But that's just an example. So, you know, you won't have to worry about Four Worlds. You won't have to worry about Clip Pots or anything. Uh, of course, with uh, Duelist Alliance coming out in August and then Worlds being in September, Shadals will be playable um so Tele Knights, yes will be playable but you know with our list combined and going down Shockmaster will be banned um we're not getting the star stare off so you know that deck is definitely going to take a neuter and a hit so uh coming from that angle from uh ocg you know we might not be seeing that so you know coming from both sides of the of uh, the of the Yu-Gi-Oh world uh we might be seeing some totally different decks because, you know, we're totally different games and we're coming together and we're just having this down list. So, really, the ones that are really taking a beating are definitely the OCG because they have to conform to our list where they're all useful, used to their, their Monster Reborns and their Heavy Storms and their Shock Masters and all of that. Us, on the other hand, no. Over there in the OCG, it is mandatory to play Compulse at 3. Mandatory. Over here, it's at 1. So, definitely, things are just going to be totally different at Worlds, and, you know, with, with Soul Charge, you know, they just recently got Soul Charge, they just recently got Soul Charge, uh, I want to say in May, and they also got Mathematician, and they also got uh, Curry Bannon, so they, they have the cards that we have. So, definitely, with Soul Charge, they wanted to go ahead and just keep it for Worlds, so, despite, you know, this card, should the card be hit, definitely, uh, we're just, they decided that, you know what, just going to keep it at three. It's only a month and a half or two months and a half. And then we're just going to go ahead in October. We're just going to go ahead and address it. So now uh, I'm going to stay calm. I'm just going to go ahead and talk about this card. I've been seeing a lot of people lately who have just been saying that Soul Charge is a balanced card. And that, you know, it should go ahead and stay at three. And that some people even say that it's a trash card. And really, it's not. Soul Charge is definitely a broken card no matter how you look at it. And you look at it, some people look at it like, whoa, whoa, you have to pay life points. In the game of Yu-Gi-Oh, life points don't mean anything. And I don't know why people get this thought in their head that life points are so important. They're not. Life points are expendable. I will pay all but one of my life points to drop yours to zero, because in the end, I still win. You know, it's do it doesn't matter, you know, and, oh, well, your life points carry over to game two, so, you know, we're dueling, and if I get your life points down to 2,000 in game one, and then we go to game two, my and I lose, my life points reset to 8,000, and you're still at 2,000, so if I beat you 2,000, then we get to go to game three, and then you'll be at 8,000, and then my life points will be at whatever they are at the ga end of game, no, it doesn't work like that, you get a fresh, fresh slate, every single duel so like i said i will pay all but one of my life points to drop you to zero because in the end i still win and this isn't the first time that a card has shown up where it's cost life points and people are like oh that's such a big cost but yet people still play it because it's really good all right we played solemn judgment at three for goodness sakes we played solemn warning at three for goodness sakes and we still play solemn warning today we'll pay that two thousand because just stopping that summon is just so important because Clearly, Solemn Warning is a card where resources is more, an advantage is more important than life points. You know, I will definitely spell speed three, Solemn Warning, that damn monster, unless you have a wire tab, I got you, then, you know, not pay the life points. I'll pay the 2,000. Soul Charge is exactly the same way. I will pay the life points to get the advantage. And if you don't got the answer, I got the advantage. Another thing that they're saying that how the card is balanced is because you can't conduct your battle phase. Okay, I can't conduct my battle phase. That's fine. So, all of a sudden, not conducting your battle phase makes cards crap? So, part of the economy or part of duplicity sucks because you can't conduct your battle phase? No. That's not the reason why part of the economy slash part of the pussy isn't the most sought after card in every deck. One, you gotta have, you know, the different types, three different types of monsters, which not every deck can pull off, and it has to be the first thing that you activate, you know? So if you pot a duality into a pot of the economy slash pot of duplicity, you can't play. It has to be the first thing that you activate in your main phase one. First one, first thing. That's the reason. The whole conducting your battle phase, that's not really a problem, because 
in the end, you can still special summon. You can still activate the 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 effect your effects that turn, and you can still go into more special summons. The same thing with Soul Charge. When you play it, you still get to summon all the monsters. You can still activate any of their effects, and you can still special summon into even more monsters. So. Even just paying 2,000 life points, even just playing Solemn Warning, which is a one for one. Because I'm activating Solemn Warning to stop your one monster, and most of the time, stopping your one monster, and I'm paying 2,000. Soul Charge. I'm playing Soul Charge. I'm paying 2,000. The exact same thing as I would be to play Soul Charge. To summon two monsters. I just plus one. Soul Charge is at three. Solemn Warning is at one. Then you can play, you can summon as many as you want as long as you got the life points to do it. And the more you summon, the more advantage you have. As long as you use the card wisely, you can build up so much advantage and just lock your opponent out, despite not even being able to conduct your battle phase. You know, I've seen it plenty of times, especially with you know the Mythic Ruler deck. Well, they'll play Soul Charge, they'll pay the life points, and they'll bring back some Dragon Rulers and some Mythic Rulers. Mythic Dragons, and they will be like, okay, well, I'm going to make a Felgrand, I'm going to make a Starter Spark, I'm going to make a Draco Sack, I'm just going to go ham. And, sure, I can't conduct my battle phase, so you live this turn, but, you know, I got Starter Spark, Felgrand, and a Draco Sack. Pass to you. Can you get around this? No? Then I guess I win. It's the advantage of it. That's the thing. That it just nets you so much advantage. Where, in this game... People are saying like, oh, Monster Reborn, so broke. Monster Reborn is broke. But Soul Charge is fine? I just don't understand. How is the life points and the not being able to conduct a battle phase, how does that balance out the fact that Monster Reborn is a one for one and Soul Charge can be a plus four? It, it just doesn't balance out. It just doesn't make any sense. Now, I'm not saying that we should ban Soul Charge and bring back Monster Reborn. No, I'm not, I'm not saying that. I'm saying that in the end, they both should be banned. You know, we've been, we were fine. We were fine without Monster Reborn. The game state was fine. You know, it's not like we were like, oh, we need a Monster Reborn. Without Monster Reborn, the game is falling apart. No, we were fine without it. We would have been perfectly fine if Konami never gave us Soul Charge. And, you know, if it never existed, we'd still be fine. But because of the existence of this card, the game has definitely changed. But I know what Konami is probably thinking. I know what a lot of people are thinking. And, uh, <sighs> You know what, I'll be flexible. You know, I, I was definitely in the last video, I was definitely just being a strictly, just being like, you know what, ban it, ban it, ban it, ban it. And, you know what, if it gets banned, I wouldn't be surprised, and I wouldn't be upset if it got banned. But, I'm going to be a little bit more lean, be a little bit more flexible, and I don't think that this should be the correct method, but it'll probably be the method, but Soul Charge will probably be limited to one in the upcoming list. Where, generally, the thing is that... Soul Charge may warrant the ban, but it ha it's not powerful enough, and I know this is weird, it's not powerful enough and it hasn't shaken the game enough to be on Konami's radar that hard. Generally, when Konami takes a card at 3 and slaps it down the ban, it has pretty much shaped a deck or shaped a particular play so much that it has taken a deck to tier 0 status. Soul Charge has not done that. Soul Charge has not brought a deck up to tier 0 status. Super Rejuve, Dragon Roars, tier 0 status. Spellbook of Judgment, Spellbooks, tier 0 status. Soul Charge has not done that, and that's the thing. So, I really don't see Konami just ripping that card from 3 to ban because of that. I can see them definitely bringing that down to 1. At 1, it will become a staple. Where every deck will run it. Well, not every deck. Well, the thing is that I will still not run it. But I know it will see more play in more decks. It'll be like, well, you know what? When it was at 2 or 3, you know, I didn't have room. I, I, you know, no. But when it's at 1, even just paying 1,000 life points, that's a monster I'm born. So, yeah, it's a staple. I'm going to run Soul Charge. So, even decks that didn't even run Soul Charge before will be running Soul Charge just because it's at 1. It just seems like a staple, you know? Oh, I got one more spot left in my deck. Alright, let me just start Soul Charging because why not? It's a monster reborn. And that's what people are going to treat it as when it goes to 1. As a monster reborn. So, at a, as a monster reborn, it's going to feel sacky er because you're going to be seeing it more often. You know? And with Soul Charge... 
the decks that it's in, you generally know that's what you're gonna, you know, that's the deck that you're gonna see it in. If you see some Dragon Rulers, you know that Soul Charge is gonna be in there. If you see some Sylphans, you know that Soul Charge is gonna be in there. But when it goes down to one, you don't know what deck is gonna be was going to be playing Soul Charge, so you might as well assume that every deck is going to be playing Soul Charge, unless it's Gravekeepers or Medal Chase. <laughs> every other deck, you might as well just assume that Soul Charge is in there, and when it gets played, don't be surprised, because it's going to be a staple. So, it's going to feel a little bit sackier, because at then it's going to be a top deck, but the thing is, is that at least its consistency is lowered, where... Yes, more decks will be running it because it's a staple, but the decks that have been abusing it at 3 will take the hit and Soul Charge will be at 1. Where, if they get it off and they go off, they got it. And at that point, that's what I feel like it's going to be. It's going to be staple, and then in the right hands, it's either going to be a way to come back into the duel, complete A, com come back into the duel using the, the power of Soul Charge, B, completely dominate and lock down your duel, as a win condition, so that's what I definitely see Char Soul Charge becoming when it gets limited down to one. And in the upcoming ban list prediction that, of course, I'll be doing, I'm already prepared for it. Uh, Soul Charge will be limited to one, so that's a spoiler. I definitely believe that Soul Charge should be at one, and we can test it at one. And like I said, it just all makes sense, and the pieces all come together that Soul Charge should just be that card should, that ju should just be at one. Now, if it continues to cause problems at one, and you know, then we can go ahead and address it accordingly. But I think at one, that's where I feel like it's gonna sit, where Konami feels like, yeah, this is right, this is just right. But like I said, if they want to ban it, more power to them. I don't care. Sure. Fine. No one can use it. But I definitely see Konami just going ahead and putting that card at one. And uh, it's just going to be staple. And uh, at least the consistency is lowered. So at that point, it would just feel sacky. So the same way that your opponent top decks into a Monster Airborne, your opponent will be top decking into a Soul Charge. And while the game may have been perfectly fine without Monster Airborne, uh, we will just have Soul Charge until either it comes off with some broken S play, or it doesn't do anything at one, or nothing to really shake or phase the game, uh, and it just sits at one. Same thing with Dark Hole, where, you know, Dark Hole, wow, you get to destroy all the monsters on the field! Woo, that's so powerful! But, it really hasn't warrant being banned, so it's been just sitting at one. I feel like Soul Charge will be the same way, where it'll net you a lot of advantage, it'll be, you know, powerful when it's played, but it won't be one of those cards that would really be on anybody's radar, and let some broken-ass play, broken game, or, and then that's the thing, is that its consistency is lowered, where, yes, it will be a win condition. It's just, I, I feel I'll put it in the same boat as, like, Royal Tribute, where, you know, if a Gravekeeper player gets it off, you know, they got it, you know, Royal Tribute, that's their win card, you know, uh, BLS can win you a game, uh, Dark Arm Dragon can win you a game, but those cards that won, their consistency is loaded where if they get it off, they got it, but if they don't, then no. And I definitely think that, you know, Konami's been paying attention to Soul Charge. They've been seeing what Soul Charge has been doing, both in here in the TCG and in the OCG. And if it would be any time that that card's going to get hit, it would definitely be in October. Definitely. Where Worlds is over, we've seen uh, how powerful the card is. And I definitely think that some kind of variant or some kind of deck will be running Soul Charge in Worlds. And they will be using it. Whether it be at 1 or 2 or 3, they're going to be using Soul Charge just because of how powerful it is. Even the OCG, they have Monster Born, they still use Soul Charge. It's pretty much the more aggressive decks in OCG use Soul Charge, and the slower kind of uh, slow-paced decks use Monster Born. So, Evil Swarms, they use Monster Born. Uh, you know, Satella Knights and Dragon Ruler variants and stuff like that, they use Soul Charge. So that's kind of how it is in the OCG. Here in the TCG, people just use it, some people just use it as a monster reborn. So, I definitely think that after Worlds is over in the October list, Soul Charge will be limited to one. And at one, I'm okay with it. I'm okay with that one. I feel like it's still kind of sacky, but at least the consistency is lowered. At least I don't have to worry about my opponent going, you know, have open up with multiple Soul Charges, be able to go off, you know, being a, uh, you know, just like you can open up with the MST, you open up with the Soul Charge and be able to net all that advantage off of it. So, uh, go ahead and tell me what you guys think about Soul Charge. Like I said, limited to one. So, I did another 20 minute video talking about Soul Charge, but I'm just really passionate about this card. And I'm really passionate about this game, and I just kind of feel like Soul Charge has been definitely shaking how the game has been played. And it's not like the game was sucking before the existence of Soul Charge, but definitely 
by definition of broken, Soul Charge has break, broken the game because it has altered the state in which the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! is played. The game before and after the existence of Soul Charge has definitely changed, and um, I just think that definitely in October that it should be limited to one. So tell me what you guys think about Soul Charge. If you haven't seen my first video talking about Soul Charge, where I talk about other things about Soul Charge, you can go ahead and click the description. You can go ahead and click the link in the description. It'll take you right to the first video. So that's it. That's pretty much all I had to talk about with Soul Charge and uh, anything about uh, this ban list. So if you have uh, anything that you want to talk about, be sure to comment in the comment section below, and I will reply to any comments that need to be replied to. So I hope you guys enjoyed another episode of the card review. Be sure to come back Tuesday where I will be talking about another card that probably needs to be addressed. And that is Supply Unit slash Supply Squad. So look forward to that. So thank you for listening to me ramble on about Soul Charge. And I will see you guys on Tuesday with another card review. Thanks for watching.